So you're probably asking, what the hell are you doing? What does it look like I'm doing? I'm hacking. This is the Technix SLD2 that I featured in a recent video, and guess what? I'm still working on it. I know it's nothing fancy, but I like it, and I enjoy bringing old neglected gear back to a semblance of looking nice and functioning properly again. Like most turntables of this vintage, it came with broken tabs on the cover that attached to hinges in the base. And most people just live with it because a good replacement lid is sometimes hard to find or pretty pricey. I found a solution on eBay for under $30, which is actually kind of high considering what they are. But anyway, to connect them, I had to carefully saw off the remnants of the old hinge from the lid, drill four holes in the correct locations, and then fasten the brackets using the nuts, washers, and bolts. Now the lid opens and closes smoothly. It just needs a slight adjustment because it doesn't quite close flush with the base, as you can see. Next, I'm going to upgrade the current Ortofone cartridge with this excellent vintage Shure model. I am concerned, however, that the Shure is considerably heavier than the Ortofone and that the arm's counterbalance does not weigh enough to compensate for the difference. This Shure comes from an era when very low tracking forces were highly desired. This model is rated from 0.75 to 1.25 grams. And just holding it now, it definitely feels pretty heavy. I'm going to start by removing the old mat and carefully removing the, the other cartridge. And then I'm going to use my little electronic scale to check the downward force on this cartridge. And as I said before, it feels a little heavy, so I won't be surprised if, it's, if it comes out to be very high. So I'll carefully place it down on the scale and... Whoa! That went all the way to full. Let me get that off. I will screw the counterweight back in an attempt to lower the downward force on the cartridge. Now that's a bit better at 2.89 grams, but I will need to screw it back some more. I eventually got it to my target, but now the counterweight is almost dangling off the end. And when I close the lid, it touches it at the back. So what do you do if you want to use a photo cartridge that's a bit too heavy for your tone arm? Obviously, I must add extra weight to the counterweight, but, but how? I did a little internet research and found a posting that suggested attaching some lead tape to the counterweight, the type that is stuck to the frame of a tennis racket. Uh, the extra mass adds power to your swing, so they say. I got the quarter inch wide tape here and I'm going to kind of wrap it around part of this weight. I'm thinking maybe around this little, this part here. So let's try it out. It required some trial and error and I ended up attaching about four feet or 1.3 meters to the back of the counterweight. And you know what? The silver metallic ring doesn't look too horrible. It kind of blends in. Now I can easily balance the tone arm with this sure cartridge and the counterweight is no longer precariously positioned like before. Now if there's anybody out there watching this video thinking, no, don't do that, you're going to ruin the record or the tone arm or the stylus, please let me know. It'd be very interesting to hear your reaction to this. Now this one isn't exactly a hack, but it's a nice little tip. I used to be a bit fuzzy about anti-skating. Now you're supposed to set the anti-skating so that the stylus rides along the center of the record groove with the correct level of left and right forces. Traditionally on turntables like this one, you set the number on the dial to match the downward tracking force. However, I've often read that many turntables have inaccurate anti-skating adjustments. So I've 
used to find it very difficult to know if I said it correctly. My solution was to buy one of these test records. And this particular one was released by Shure in the 1960s to test their cartridges. On side one, there's a blank grooveless section in the middle of the record where you place your stylus. And if the tone arm quickly drifts towards the middle or the outer edge of the record, the anti-skating is not set correctly. So I lower the tone arm onto the record surface and I turn the anti-skating dial in both directions until the stylus stops drifting and remains near the middle of the blank area for a few seconds or so. So now the anti-skating is set correctly. No one wants to have a dirty stylus. Yuck! Dirt wears out everything it attaches to. The diamond tip, the record grooves, and it sounds terrible. So what's an easy and safe way to clean a stylus? Some cartridges come with a little brush. I'm not a big fan of those. I worry that they're a little rough and ready and not terribly effective. I found online this preferred method by a highly respected cartridge designer. What you do is you buy some blue tack, that versatile adhesive putty that every audio enthusiast should have, take a small piece and make a ball out of it, then flatten it out to about the size and thickness of a quarter. Then you place it on the platter under your cartridge and gently lower and raise it about three or four times. It is said that dirt will stick to the blue tack and leave the stylus clean. And it also recommended that you do this each time you play a record. Super easy. Easy peasy. If you have an old turntable like mine that's 30, 40, or 50 years old, there's little doubt that the plastic dust cover has had its share of wear and abuse. It's a very convenient surface for a variety of drinks, books, albums, and you name it. In the 1980s and 90s, most people ditched their records for CDs, and many turntables were discarded or packed up and put into closets, attics, basements, and garages, where they usually sat for decades, and likely with other stuff stacked on top. What do you do with a scratched up old dust cover? I suggest using a mild abrasive like an automobile polishing compound like this that is made to buff out minor scratches in the paint. Using a damp cloth, rub the compound fairly vigorously all over the surface of the cover, do all the sides and even include the underside as well. I assume that at some point in its life the cover was removed and used for other purposes rather than just keeping dust off. Use a clean wet cloth to wipe off the compound and then use a microfiber towel to dry. When done, a bit of window cleaner can be used to finish it off. I suggest you repeat this process at least a couple of times for better results. But let's be realistic. This method is not going to completely refurbish a scratched up cover, but it definitely smooths and evens out the appearance and it looks better and feels noticeably smoother. Now there are other products out there you can try as well that perform a similar function, but I just wanted to give you uh, the basics of this. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave another hack that you know that you'd like to share with others. I really would enjoy like that as well. So that's it for now. So see you next time. Bye.